I'm like, I'm sorry, I used to be, I give you mean faces. Even you, I'll be like, sorry, I was a little standoffish. But it's just how I've survived by being standoffish. And that was the only way I didn't get like banged. <laughs> I'm a fing animal! I'm, 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 Are you ready to enter the animal fetish? <laughs> <laughs> What's up, folks? I'm DJ Wonder, and guess what? Complete Animals is back. It was a brief hiatus. I'm going through some things, but I figured this is cheaper than therapy, so <laughs> I'm getting back to it. We're back, Complete Animals, and um, I wanted to have somebody on as my first guest that I was interested in uh, because she's an innovative person and I'm trying to talk to people that I'm also kind of jealous of so she fits that criteria as well. She's also creative and uh, her name is Norma Moreno aka Norma Now. What's up? What's up? Oh, I gotta, I gotta hear the sound effects. I was just clapping. That's all. <laughs> Don't worry about it. Not, nothing special. Uh, yeah, man. So thank you for having me as your first guest. Uh, I am so impressed. This is a beautiful setup. I am so impressed. Well, thank you. <laughs> it, it, it takes many years to get a moving background like this installed into the studio. <laughs> so I'm glad we we're able to do it. Um, I said a couple things that you do, but also your bio says that you're uh, into wellness. We'll talk, we'll talk about that later, man. It's all good. <laughs> Let's just talk about where you came from. I want to talk about your history. Where were you born? I was born and raised in Miami. Miami, Florida. Any brothers or sisters? I have one sister. One no sister. brothers, I wish. Okay. Um. <laughs> and then uh, what about you? What's your earliest memory of like media? Uh, first, like TV show, music, anything that you really liked as a kid? Me and my sister, um, we were always really into music. Um, uh, I took a lot to, you know, uh, I always like was got into what my sister liked. I will never forget my sister was like the first one who put me on like MIA and she was into like Oasis and the Beatles, my, my cousin as well. So um, my dad, he was really into disco. He was always playing records um Jackson 5 and Rick James and you know there was always music playing in the house so yeah I mean I wouldn't say we're not a musical family but like we're music lovers and so you know my grandfather he always had like opera records playing so you know I was, I was just always around music and and I guess inspired and motivated by that but me and my sister you know we're, we're like best friends so I guess that's like the earliest memory I have of just media and music. But we were always, I feel like even from like working in my jobs, like I've been a fan of like pop culture. And I think naturally like being in the industry, we all become like observers. But I'm truly like a cool, like observer, cool hunting, like of what's going on around me. I think I've just always been like that. I, in the same way. I didn't have any brothers or sisters, but so basically media raised me. And that's the problem I have now. Is that I've, it's messed up my mind. Um, where, uh, what did you want to be when you grew up? When I was little, I wanted to be like, well, when I was little, little, I wanted to be like an opera singer, <laughs> which is so <laughs> random. And then when I hit like middle school, high school, I wanted to be a, a journalist, actually, like a writer. Mm -hmm. um, and then I, I tried to study that, but I, I didn't do well in my classes, so I had to finesse and change. <laughs> I, I mean, do you sing still? Like, did you have a good voice, or do you have a good voice? Do you think? I, I mean, I would like to think so, but I was like in, I was like in chorus, mm -hmm. and I got accepted to go to like a like a special school. It's a specialty school for people who are, I guess, gifted in chorus. Mm -hmm. Um, but I, I mean, I don't know. I don't know if it, I don't know if I'm capping or if that was like actual. <laughs> I was talented, but. Um, yeah, I don't know. I liked the sing. <laughs> I don't know. Dude, I was in chorus, and I thought I, was, I thought I could kill it. They offered like um, solos every so often, and I was gonna take one. And I thought, man, I'm gonna kill this Billy Joel song. But then I tried to do it by myself, and I didn't do very well. So I'm glad I didn't take it. But I, I was a chorus <laughs> kid as well, man. Chorus was always fun, and that leads me when you talk about that school. Like, did you ever want to be a creative? Like, go, did they have like art schools down here? And like, what was the process of like getting into a like a school like that? They have like magnet schools here. Mm -hmm. um, so when you're in when you're in like middle school you can choose like a path and if you're doing well in like some kind of program then you could like go that path um so i just remember in fifth grade they're like oh do you want to go to this like specialty school for for like you know performing arts and uh, i turned it down because i wanted to be 
with my friends instead. And so I didn't go to this magnet program, which is so stupid. Man, that would have been my dream. I wish I would have had that option growing up to go to some kind, some kind of art school, but just went to regular old public school in Delaware, man. That's where I came from. Oh, really? Yeah. Is that where you're born and raised from? Delaware, yeah. And where in Delaware? Georgetown, Delaware, and then Rehoboth Beach. Um, so farmland and then the beach resort area. Then how'd you end up in New York? 17 years old, I went to New York City. And like you said, I hate whatever i'm over delaware i'm out of here i mean i always wanted to um get out of i always wanted to go to city stuff like i grew up at the beach and that's my parents love going to vacations at other beaches and stuff i just wasn't a beach person i was i wanted to go to like museums and go to like philadelphia and stuff like that and they're not city people um so i just wanted to get out of here and uh new york was just appealing to me i mean i chose you chose not to go to a school because your friends i chose to go to a school because of music and a music scene and at the time like new york hip-hop was like the biggest thing ever you didn't you had to go there no matter what region you were from um you like couldn't. it was like a magnet pulling you yeah you had to be I, like wherever i wanted to go i wanted there to be a good like music scene around it whatever city it was or whatever college and i just ended up going to new york that's where i ended up uh hofstra university man i wanted to go to nyu didn't get in so I ended up going to hofstra for film production uh, oh, that explains it here. Yeah, another <laughs> another waste. Did you uh, did you go to college at all? I did. I did. I went to all of all of the colleges, all of the things. That's why, um, you know, it's funny because I think after the fact, like I think college plays a role for everyone. If anything, it's just like an experience period um, that you learn from. But I went to Miami Dade College here. I went to uh, a school. I did my freshman year in Mobile, Alabama. Um, because I have some family over there. Um, that's where I studied journalism. And then I ended up ending at University of Miami and I graduated there. So, but what's crazy is all that money spent, which I'm like not paying at all yet. Um, I've like deferred my student loans like 10,000 times, but um, I don't need that. <laughs> no, I, no one's asked me for a diploma like ever. And mm -hmm. I, I don't even know if I have bragging rights because like, who cares? But I guess it's just a learning experience. <laughs> yeah, I think it's the uh, same thing as that. If I was to go back, I would, I mean, I would still do it because I, I, you know, I didn't know anybody where I went to school and in the industry, uh, entertainment industry at all. So it helped me learn that a lot via internships and just having to deal with people who I don't know on a daily basis. Um, but for as for school itself, man, I definitely would have done way more internships or way more just like apprenticeships with random people in the industry that I wanted to be in or whatever facet of the entertainment industry. So college, I think, is great in certain aspects and uh, maybe other ways you can probably just jump right into what you want to do at this point. I, I think about that stuff now because like even like I think it was OK to have inter internships back then. And I did like mad internships. I interned at like down here in Miami. They have MTV Latin America and I interned there. I like believe it or not, I interned at like DJ Khaled's st recording studio for a little bit for We The Best. Like I interned at um, Oh Wow, like an art gallery here. And that's how I met Raul. Um, it's a pretty prominent art gallery that was going on. And I met Raul and I met Press and all the Peach Mills guys. But um internships are the shit and now they get you know nobody wants to do them but sometimes i think i'm like i would love to intern for someone now because mm -hmm. like you know i want to learn i think i'm at the age where i'm like i want to learn new things like i would love to infer intern for like a jeweler yeah <laughs> i want to learn how to make jewelry yeah. they're not like little like crystals and stuff like rings and things i'm like i would like to do that or like i'd like to intern for like a I don't know, like, a, I guess people used to do like recording studios and stuff like that, mm -hmm. like things like that, like to learn new things. I mean, that's what I want to do, like interior design or something. I need to like uh, tag along with somebody. Or, actually, I need to intern with somebody who actually makes money. Yeah, that's what I want to intern with. Somebody okay, who, okay. who makes Someone money. Makes money. None, of, none of this stuff that I'm actually interested in, but things that actually will generate yeah. <laughs> profit at some point. Um, OK, so let's talk about like where you actually worked. Um, you did work in human resources at one point, right? Oh, God. Someone's been on my LinkedIn or oh, something. Is that, <laughs> I, don't, I don't know where I found well, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. My um, uh, I, my mom used to work at a rehab center. And so I got a job like helping out there. Mm -hmm. And then, um, yeah, I just did marketing stuff always. Um, I always got pushed into like as a Miami person, you get you can take the path of being a 
marketing and then you get into promotion and then you mm -hmm. become a promoter and then you become a I guess you could go further and further that way but um I met a promoter and uh who was a beautiful angel at that time and he put me on and he had a marketing agency um it was kind of, he was kind of finessing everybody but he had a marketing agency and so after that human resource time was just like my mom but mm -hmm. after that I worked at a marketing agency and then alongside that I always worked at um I've worked at like every sneaker store in Miami like <laughs> oh we're gonna run through everything don't you worry I know it all Just in case you don't think I do I know it all okay. but what I was gonna ask you about the human resources thing like uh what do you think you know what the job market is like in 2024 when the last time you had to you had to find a job was like what 2022 or you had to like uh do an interview or something like that yeah I mean I I just basically joined the job market again so yeah I mean it was it was it's rough out there yeah <laughs> um I can't even get like a call back like for an interview you know what I mean like then so I don't know how people are doing it nowadays but good luck to each and every one of you I hope you make it um this is a human resources person that started everything <laughs> right here um you also worked at Live Nation uh for a little bit down here with the film war oh yeah yeah that's where I, I did an internship and mm -hmm. then uh eventually I I think I might have I had like a small little job there, but I didn't turn there too. I'm telling you, I interned everywhere. Yeah. And then you did social media for a hotel group, right? Yes. That's the marketing agency. I was Okay. I so that, <laughs> that's important because I think that's something that we still use on a daily basis and you, you use it as well. Social media. Yeah. What, what's the difference between back then running a social media account and 2024 running a social media account? I feel like it was so hard back then because you everyone was it was like the wild wild west like nobody knew what you were nobody knew what they were doing so we were like I don't even know we didn't have a photographer did we we didn't have photographers we I had like a graphic designer maybe we were putting together we were just finessing um <laughs> yeah I don't know I, I feel like things were just like uncharted waters mm -hmm. and there was nothing to go off of but I think about that time a lot because if I had started like I had a blog back then if I had started if I had been consistent with it even if someone had a YouTube back then like mm -hmm. no way like duh by now you would be popping because it's been like 10 years of doing your YouTube you're gonna be like popping if you're consistent with it you know yeah, I was gonna say cause I've been doing stuff for a long time and never really popped off <laughs> man. But maybe I just keep on trying like everybody says <laughs> right just never quit that's the only way to make it yeah you gotta be consistent I don't know if in your 10 year career you've been consistent I mean I think you have but I don't know I don't know honestly I feel like social media is like you just got to try every single angle until you crack some kind of code. I don't I don't I don't get it. But we were finessing, honestly, back then, like this guy named Tatanka. He's he's like a South Beach legend. He used to run um Flavella Beach on Wednesdays. Mm -hmm. Did you did you ever see about that? I never went to it, but I heard about the party at yeah. the at the W. Mm -hmm. It was a classic, classic party at the W. And um he was the one who who ran that marketing agency with the hospitality group. He was finessing. And I'm talking about like out of college, I was making like every two weeks I went from working at American Apparel I've just worked everywhere okay <laughs> I worked from American Apparel working like every two weeks my check would be like 500 600 bucks and then I started working with this guy Tatanka with his finesse and he he got me like a check like every two weeks making like two thousand mm. dollars which is kind of crazy like in as being like a whatever 22 23 year old so and we ran that until the well like to the well and ran. you got to take advantage yeah. as much as possible no, I, see a, I, I learned a lot from him i see a lot of marketing places uh do that especially in places i've worked for i've i've seen them take advantage of certain because every company has to give away a certain amount of marketing dollars per year or whatever and they write it off yeah. and everything so just no. take as much as possible throw the craziest party at the one hotel who cares you know yeah. what i mean um but now like for social media like a, a manager you could put one post that somebody agree disagrees with and if you're in like a fortune 500 company like drive your stock down like so yeah. it's it's a i think it's a little more pressure in 2024 yeah. you think yeah no i i definitely do think so you have to be you know respectful and like aware of of everything um it's funny when you see people like put on their accounts like views are of my own you know mm -hmm. what i'm talking about yeah um but yeah back then they weren't even paying attention to me like norma it was just like oh she throws some parties or something but we were just finessing all right well let's mm. talk you talked about you had a blog let's get into the real deal we're going to talk about <laughs> the parties and everything else so it's time to there we go baby <laughs> what is this this is this, now we're in now we're in my lair 
I don't know. There's no sound. There's no sound effects. Oh, don't don't worry. The it's layer a, it's, sounds. It's, it's the same. <laughs> um, all right. So. <laughs> this is so funny. Yeah, this is the layer. Uh, <laughs> okay. So as you were like interning and working American Apparel and doing this stuff, you also had interests outside of that. And you started a blog and I guess a kind of an event company as well. Your own kind of event. Yeah. We're also of. finessing. I yeah. think every, I don't know if it's a Miami thing, but. We've been finessing for a long time here. I don't know if I, I don't know if you're talking about, you've been a long time to see if you haven't made it or not, but mm -hmm. I don't know if I've, I don't, wouldn't say I've made it, but I've been finessing and I'm tired. Dude, <laughs> I think I'm tired too. What, what, uh, so this was the blog era where everybody was kind of either having like a Tumblr or something like yeah. that or your own website. And then, you know, it, it started getting to a point where like it was called the blog era for for music industry that I was in is because yeah. like people all these blogs were getting like invited to parties before I was or getting records before I would as a DJ and that really yeah. irked me back then but I understand did you hear the, the blog era the podcast I, I I lived through it I don't need to listen to I it I know I know well, I heard it <laughs> shout out to them um, but uh, it's so funny that you say that because I definitely feel like I hear I heard that ep there's an episode where the DJs are like complaining about that oh yeah dude it was bad because what's the whole point that's why we're doing is we want to get to the party first and who are these nerds that know how to like yeah. make things <laughs> like put JPEGs on something and they're getting it <laughs> alright um, what, what was like the, the music and culture that you were into that uh made you want to start a blog well um i feel like it i mean like i said earlier i mean i'm truly like a fan of the culture watching observing everything and so maybe like from my space to message boards to yeah like uh, we got that new whatever you downloading mixtapes like I'm I was one of those people I'm, a, I'm one of those girls who enjoyed in the consuming of the culture and um throughout all that I'm a hype beast right like I love I love buying sneakers I'm listening to Lupe Fiasco it's like Kanye West on his on his world press on his blog you know his blog was popping and stuff and I'm like loving I don't know bape or something I wish I could buy it like I'm that little kid and um uh at that time i met um i met a friend named asia um she became my best friend and we were like maybe just turned 21 and we were just walling out doing the most miami shit she was not from here she's from like um from the dmv area of virginia mm -hmm. we were just being reckless and we're like oh we started going out to live on wednesdays they used to have a popping party and like it was like kid cuddy and like kid sister performing on Wednesdays and Iggy Azalea when she was cool mm -hmm. and it was just like a different era and so we decided to like start blogging and talking about we were just getting into so much crazy experiences that we're like oh we should blog about it and so we would like you know put up pictures and do little diaries of what we we're doing but then also she was into like doing like nail art mm -hmm. or getting nail art done so she would you know, oh, I want to do a post about that. She was in school for, for clothing. So she was, you know, talk about her designs and stuff. And I was like, there's a new Nike SB <laughs> dropping on Friday. Or like, oh, Lupe Fiasco dropped this new album and stupid stuff. You know, MIA is coming out with a new song. Like, so we were doing all that. And then people in Miami were sending us like, you know, someone would be like, oh, we, I have a new song coming out review it or hey i have an event this friday can you put up the flyer and so kind of like warped into like okay we're getting hit up to like we were getting hit up to host things like oh can you come host our our showcase mm -hmm. and so it went from like that to like oh well art there's a, there was a thing called art basil and um and we're like oh something's coming up like we should do a little showcase during art basil and then that was our first party Okay. Um, back to being like a hype beast. Uh, no, because I'm. We're gonna trust me. We're gonna talk. I love talk being about a hype beast. Though. Yeah, but I, and this is me personally. Also, I was into sneakers just from the very beginning of Nike SBs and everything else. Um, I visited the Supreme store the first time I ever went to New York when I was like 14 years old really? in school. Um, and so I was always like into that stuff but it's something that like i think a characteristic that comes along with that for at least for me is that i was very like i don't want anybody else knowing the stuff that i have or like if this person has that i'm like i don't like this did you feel that way at like all like gatekeeping before you get yes gatekeeping. i hate that word but like tiktok language in general i hate <laughs> but yeah that exactly did you feel that way like you didn't want some like girl that you thought was generic like wearing the same sneakers as you that you like camped out for or something like that but you know what was so cool about that time and i'm sure like old heads would say the same about whatever their time was but that time 
we were just such a small niche population. Like you were on like Nike talk mm -hmm. or whatever. And it wasn't like anyone knew about it. Like in my high school, it was like 10 of us who were like thought sneakers were cool and knew it, where to even buy them. Mm -hmm. You know, there was only like at that time, shoe gallery is the, was the only spot to get like the exclusive tier one, whatever nikes you know and that's why everyone was camping outside there was only one store um south beach i forgot it right now south beach that that had all the nike sbs like there was only we we knew which stores like which champs was going to get that jordan drop like but it was only a couple of people so i i felt like you didn't feel scared to like let go of like the code because nobody else was interested or cared about like the secret you know so it was just such a beautiful time where it was like you actually could enjoy like the thing you liked because nobody you, you felt special like you were like that oh you like if you're at your family function it's like oh you know norma she's into like her those funky shoes <laughs> and now it's like your grand your aunt is wearing the panda dunks or something yeah. you're like jesus christ it's not special no more all i wanted um was for like crazy neon colors and all that stuff to come back because they never made uh, those they, fresh prince hats so oh yeah the, the retro kids all those guys like they're they used to... in them that that era yep <laughs> and and then once they started like seeing that people really liked it when they would put out like a hot pink shoe every so often like guys would actually buy it and then they started making it and then made it like general releases for everything yeah. and it just got messed up now i wear all black so you know what i mean you, you go <laughs> you go completely safe. opposite um and so how was it being down in miami because most of that stuff was going on in new york city and in la so what was it like being on the uh, third coast down here I felt like it was, like I said, just such a small, intimate community. We had um, real ones, no, like Dila, Mary Angel. There was like a small, super sneakerhead community. There was like sneaker battles, like Keen One was like DJing these sneaker battles. It was like, I'm telling you, it was like 50, 100 people that would like get up. And there was, of course, like, the sneaker pimps and all that stuff. That's mm -hmm. what like a lot. And it wouldn't even get that popping. It was like maybe what, 500 kids or something at max throughout the day. I used to help promote whatever at the end of the day, the sneaker pimps. Um, but it was just a very, it was like a different world. Um, and it was really, it was really a special time. But I felt like I always have been like an advocate for like Miami is cool. And when I was younger and wearing sneakers and into this culture people would always be like oh you're not from new york I'm like what no i'm from miami like miami people are, can be cool too like i'm cool <laughs> <laughs> so i just feel like miami people know what's up like i felt very proud to be like lupe fiasco am i a like i'm from miami but yeah i think it was very interesting i loved it i loved it but yeah. of course i always looked at like damn new york and that's why like of course i still want to move there like now mm -hmm. <laughs> well, don't worry we'll talk about that too <laughs> but uh speaking of that so your friends with 40 ounce van did you ever get to go to a 40 ounce bounce up in new york city no i never did i, I did did you yeah it's the first time i ever felt old at a party <laughs> first time did you get to do under the bridge yeah i was at riverside park or something yeah. um yeah, dude, it was just like underage kids drinking uh, 40s and stuff like that. And um, I don't know, I was just like, man, that I got I gotta get out of here. Is that really what it is? I mean, literally, 40 ounce balance or, or some kind of like liquor Malt you got from, beverage. yeah, like 90, <laughs> 99 um, bananas or whatever that stuff is, whatever kids drink. I don't know, man. That's what it was like. And I was just like, all right, man, I got to get out. <laughs> but, you know, his blog and stuff, I guess you were... Um, you were checking that out. That was part of the whole, I guess, like Tumblr, streetwear Tumblr culture. Era, yeah. Yeah. That was like that Tumblr era. We never even told you, anybody the name of your blog. So is it <laughs> is it two dope B words or is it two dope chicks? What do you use? Because I, like, I think on your resume, you put two dope chicks. But that's probably just to be politi <laughs> politically correct. Or like, so what's the actual it's, website? Was it? It was two dope bitches. Mm -hmm. Yes, that was not so. I mean, yeah, we had to. Uh, I guess poke around that and then it was so funny because of course like two dope boys was like a big blog at that time yeah. but I promise we didn't know about it when we made it but they were very yeah. territorial yeah uh, they were they did they didn't you had you had words with Mecca or he like he never spoke to you directly but he spoke around the, the I issue think, I think he might have but also like we're just little silly small fry here in Miami like there was nothing like oh my god we're coming for you mm -hmm. but um I feel like I definitely have like talked shit online with him not bad like I'm sure I've met him um or followed him or follow him or he follows me or something i don't know but it's just so crazy how that's like a land before time yeah even on the blog era podcast they talk about him how he's like incognito 
And I was wondering if you guys ever uh, spoke after, if you ever like hired him for an event or anything like after that, but mm. guess not. <laughs> All right. Well, guess what? Let's check out what some of the stuff that you did on your blog. Can I put these things on? Yeah, you can. I mean, I'm going to play a little bit of the music, but I don't know if we can do too much because oh, I'm going to get... So All right, check it out. This was like the very, very beginning, right? Oh, Lord. Yes, this is so embarrassing. Also, I'm so skinty. Um, yeah, I don't know why we thought this was so cool to record, but this is Winwood. This is Winwood right behind Koyo. Mm -hmm. And we were like, oh, you know, because Winwood was all getting like graffiti eyes and we're like oh let's go put up some graffiti <laughs> <laughs> so this is me and my friend trying to put like some graffiti up and um you guys have the biggest sticker up there yeah so yeah <laughs> we went to like a vinyl place and i don't even know like who's filming this and stuff i definitely edited on like look here we are in winwood when it was good yeah, yeah. no this is winwood this is literally right behind winwood walls the other side of winwood walls that's dope <laughs> um so that's like that's okay. uh you guys were getting up there you know and yeah, we're aspiring our, graffiti artists we're doing our street that's our street <laughs> promotion now me and asia were in the streets we were literally passing out we i mean i still would do it we would go to on cars and flyer cars ourselves and stuff mm -hmm. uh what's some of the highlights of parties during uh, your first big party was at gramps right that you guys did well my fir our first party literally was the one that we did during art basel with mm -hmm. like that Pharrell ended up showing at, like, uh, that we did with Virgil and them. I literally hit up 40. I hit up his, like, on his Tumblr, he had his email where you could submit, like, titty pics. <laughs> and and I instead submitted, like, a proposal for him to come down. I paid him, like, 500 bucks or something. I don't even remember. And I was like, come down. And I'm throwing this party. I emailed, like, literally, like, Virgil at KanyeWest.com. And I asked, you know, if, if he could come down, that I was a fan. And so I booked him uh, as Dem as Ben Trill. Ben Trill, yeah. And it, so it was him, Matthew Williams, and... Uh, Ian? Or he was... No, no. Um, damn, I'm dropping the name. Heron Preston. Oh, Heron. Okay, And yeah, I paid yeah. them, mm -hmm. like, maybe $3,000 or something for all three of them. Because they were coming down to Basel anyways. And then I was, like, a fan of... Um, Gianni Lee, he was a really cool graphic designer mm -hmm. and he had this really cute brand that I used to fuck with. So I asked him if he could help me design the flyer and then he designed the flyer. He kills it always on graphics. He ended up coming and DJing and then I was dating a guy at the time. So he helped me with a lot of stuff too. And we were really into trap music at that time because it was called trap music. And so this is like karate chop era, mm -hmm. like future. So um, there was a guy named Daniel heroes and villains who was doing like trap i know daniel yeah like trap um it was, it's called like festival trap trappy now. dm yeah back then. yeah but it was he was less dm -y. he was more trappy back then yeah. and so we booked him and then we threw this party and it was really fun i i literally we probably did it with like three thousand five thousand dollars probably asked my mom for money and stuff like that and uh and we threw this party and pharrell showed up and like we had ian connor come mm -hmm. and like um you know and noir it was like this clothing brand from back in the day like just mad like people showed up and we used that footage to keep rolling but at that moment in time i realized oh i really like doing events and then so me and asia you know at, at some point maybe we did events together for like a year or something and then I decided I would, uh, I was like, I really like doing this. I'm going to do it on my own if that's okay. And then my first event was Gramps. Okay, got you. Your first, your personal first yeah, event. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You worked at the Unknown Store and you met somebody that, who I knew you from, Yes Jules. She worked as a hostess at Arcadia. Do you know what Arcadia nah, is? Really. Um, so Live, you know Live Now? You know how there's a restaurant downstairs? Yeah. That used to be called, it was a club called Arcadia. Okay. Yeah. And she was a hostess. Like, she, at the, you know, you come to the door and she'd like make sure she'd sit you down at the table and stuff like that. So she did come in probably with LeBron's people and they were like, oh, I don't know. So I, I met her probably somehow that way. And then I went to Arcadia and then she like took care of me and sat me at a table or something. But uh, yeah, she was, she's always been a very interested like person. She always wants to, you know, collaborate and she's always interested in getting into different things so so yeah we you know we became friends and i got to go along the ride of like what life my life was like at that time because 
like I said, it was just such a beautiful era of like, we were finessing. I feel like everything is a finesse. <laughs> like that was all just like, what are we doing here? And then we're like, what is happening now? And so we were figuring out life and to together at some point, you know, but I guess we all were. Okay. <laughs> well, back at the store, like you worked at a lot of, like you said, apparel stuff and fashion, uh, I guess, retail what's the deal with that like currently like is there like a group chat that goes around for like these guys that work in like uh you know midtown design or like district. yeah design district and like they all show up at every they know how to go to every party is there like i want i just want to know the secret that's really that's really why i brought you on because i want to know how these guys show up at every single party are they in like solo hours or something like that whatever if randomly what's the real deal somebody that's worked uh, in that industry as well well i feel i always tell people and I'm, I feel like I definitely told you that at some point. Miami is so small. Somewhere like New York, there's so many different scenes. You could be in Brooklyn or you could be in the city or you could be uptown. And there's like a different cool person, a different hot girl, a different crew for that. Miami's too small. You have to come in and make a community and be a part of the community and play like an actual role. So many people that come in and start like come in from wherever they can move from Atlanta and they're like, Hey, I want to be down. I see you doing cool stuff. Like, let's do cool stuff. And I'm like, what? Like you want to do something, come to everything, come show face, be a part of stuff, be, you know, partake and, and, and actually get to know people, but like authentically get to know people so that they become your homies. But with, I call design district, like it's one big mall and um, I'm a mall kid. I've, like I said, I've, I think it's just too like, I've worked, it's maybe a gift and a curse that I, I went to a lot of schools when I was in high school. So I've, I went to school in like Hialeah, I went to school in like North Miami and South Miami and Kendall. And I worked at the LeBron store. I worked at ATC, this other brand. Uh, I worked at Nike Town. I worked at Champs in Kent. I've worked at like six sneaker stores. So I feel like I covered a lot of ground. And um, that's the only, if you think about it, that's, we don't have no Supreme. We don't have any like Canal Street here. Miami's cool people or Miami's cool scene just revolves around the only cool places we have, which is like unknown. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and like, I guess the Prada store or something like, so I don't know. I would say everyone's paying attention. I mean, I'm happy. I, I don't know what to call it, but they're my little, my hype be scene is like my hype be scene. And I'm like, I don't know where to lead you guys anymore because it's not it right now in Miami. But um, I do think they have group chats. <laughs> Gotta be, dude. There's no way they all show up at the same spot, bro. <laughs> I'm telling you. So you started uh, not only doing your stuff, then you started promoting some of the bottle service clubs, I guess, as well. You Or you would at, at least attend them. So you started to be around bigger artists, maybe not some of the indie people that you were into, like you said, Iggy Azalea or, or like Kid Cudi or some of these guys. But like you happen to see like maybe you're out in Little Wayne was out and something like that. Um, and you were interacting, I guess, with, with some of these people at the time. Uh, I feel like it's just a Miami thing. But yeah. at some point when I, um, I guess, started entering like the nightlife industry, um, you become a promoter. So I'm just a promoter. And so I'm just like a gatherer of a hoarder. I'm a, sh I'm a flocker, a shepherd. I thought you were going to say something like you're a gatherer of whores. <laughs> a gatherer of whores. <laughs> yeah. I mean, so, whatever, you know, that could also be true. But mm -hmm. I'm a gatherer of people and um, I'm getting hired at clubs. So I've worked at like now it's so those places don't exist. Something like working at FDR. I did work at FDR and mm -hmm. help out Jules on her Mondays when she first started too. That's never been my thing. I never, um, I don't want to say I never felt comfortable, but I don't like kissing butts. Yeah. So, okay. so that's what I was going to ask you is that, well, the, either from your personal parties where you had to like people, you flew artists in or DJs or something like that, or dealing with like maybe a FDR Mondays where you, people have tables. Have you ever had uh, seen an artist have crazy demands? You're like, yo, who does this person think they are? No, no, for sure. I mean, that's that's what happens. That's why I, uh, I never really could do it well. And I also think like now that I think back because I'm like older and wiser it's like it gave me way too much anxiety or something mm -hmm. like for sure like all of them like that and like even like like when we first started working with travis scott or something like you know he's a very he's very much like i want this i want that and i was literally hitting up like my homeboy who sells weed and being like can you go to this guy's room hotel room 218 trying to get him whatever you know i'm like a people pleaser so 
um that's like normal yeah people yeah. are so crazy and especially my like you come to miami and people come here to like trauma dump so mm -hmm. that no one's coming here like being <laughs> nice and sweet so yeah i'm pretty much used to that also i'm a woman and like i've had to deal with like this male ego stuff like my whole career well not only well a man versus woman ego but like did you ever get hollered at inappropriately and did you accept anything back then that you wouldn't accept and currently the way people interacted with you um I, i'm not i'm not perfect and i haven't made all the best decisions but because i was so reserved and like guarding myself and guarding my back it like in a weird way worked to my benefit in the case that like I got to survive this whole time without like sleeping around and like giving into getting ran through or something like, <laughs> yeah. I mean, I didn't give in. So I never let, I was like impenetrable, but it's like, I think about it now as I go through therapy and I'm like, oh, I just like friend zoned myself. Mm -hmm. Well, as we talk about artists, I want to know how did you end up? Oh, in Diplo's um, oh, hotel this room. Weird. <laughs> this is just Miami shit. This is just Miami shit that happens. This is so embarrassing. Hold on, let me see if I can. Okay. There we go. I don't even want to talk. I don't want to talk about this. <laughs> oh my gosh, dude. This is um, just Miami shit. That's what I'm saying. This is the kind of shit that happens. Bro. I even can't even believe that this that the West West. I can't believe that Diplo like lets this kind of stuff happen. But uh interesting we're all fans we're all fans that's what i'm saying miami was such an interesting time when you can like literally go see the artists you liked and then hang out with them after that will not happen now and if it does it's in a different way yeah <laughs> that was weird don't want to talk about that okay you don't have to say anything <laughs> but see like me as a person I, like i would see something like that I'd be like yo these girls got an interview with Diplo. he just wants to smash or something like it's it's almost like you know i'm sure you're dealing with a lot of like like you said the male ego as well it's like I, you know i'm this is somebody that i look up to as well how come these girls get uh access to somebody like that you know and me i can't get put on or something you know what yeah. i mean so i'm sure you've had to deal with issues like that as well right well, I feel like so much of like being in the, well, a lot of it is Miami, right? Like I will say I got to grow up in a city where the access to people is so easy. I also think like at that time and even now, I think I think about that stuff too. Like there's only so much degrees of separation here. Like if there's a show going on, okay, Wiz, Wiz Kid performing Oh, where's Whiskey performing at Oasis? Man, let me hit up this dude. I know how I'm gonna get to Oasis, and then I know how I'm gonna get to the background, and then I'm like, oh, and then who's who's he DJing? Oh, DJ Tunes. Oh, cool, lit. I'm gonna be back there. I know DJ Tunes or something. Mm -hmm. I don't know DJ Tunes, but you know, like it's so easy to get close to them. But that all that atmosphere came from like being in Miami versus I'm sure if like WizKid was playing in New York, I'm never getting to Madison Square Garden. Like I'm never getting to be next to him. But Miami, it's so intimate here. So a lot of how I've gotten to be able in the positions where I am is like Miami and then also my work ethic or my ability to like, I will say if I have to big up myself, I where there's a will, there's a way with me. And if I want something, I really try. But more out of like, uh, my mom calls it like inventando, like inventing. Like, I'm just like, ooh, you know, I'm the kind of person like, if you're like, yo, I want this, um, I want this new MacBook. I'm like, did you even look up that MacBook? I'm sure you can find it refurbished. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> like, I'm sure you can find it on eBay. Why don't you go actually to the used bookstore? They have a bunch of MacBooks. Like, you're slipping. Like, you, there's a way to get it. You don't need to pay, like, $3,000. I just, I hate asking people for things. I never want to ask anybody for anything. But, and I'm sure you, I, you probably feel the same way as yeah. well. We don't, like, inconvenience people, but... That's what's the point of being in this entertainment industry is like a lot of times we make not as much money as somebody in finance or something like that. But the back end and all of the uh, extracurricular stuff that we get to do for free equals the same salary as somebody else. Yeah. And so you got to use it at some point. I, I will say, too, I've always told people this when I when people would ask me for advice, like I'm where there, there's a will, there's a way kind of person. But I also at least when I was younger, I do a little bit now, but I just used to ask people like I and you would be surprised at how people don't get asked 
my mom says I say that wrong. So ask, <laughs> people don't ask for things, you know? And so I used to just ask, like when I got my first sponsorship of liquor, I was like to the Ciroc guy, I was like, hey, I'm throwing a party. Like, do you mind? Like, is there anything like I can, I would love if you can donate any bottles or something. He's like, oh, that sounds interesting. I can give you like a case of bottles if you want, you know? And it was like, oh, I'm gonna turn that into happy hour. That's like a happy hour. Ciroc sponsored happy hour, you know? But I was always just, I would, I feel like it doesn't hurt to ask. And so I used to just ask because I was young and I was like, mm -hmm. why not? And it, I mean, it literally is the reason why I did all these things. Yeah, well, that's good advice. <laughs> I, I should take that advice. Yeah, you got to ask people. Um, What's the first time you went to Puff Daddy's house? Puff Daddy, oh God. That was a, oh, from the Ciroc guy that I just talked about, Johan. Okay. Wait, why? Do you have a video of that too? No, I don't. I don't <laughs> I'm like, no. <laughs> um, no, yeah, that was uh, the Johan. So the guy that gave me my first liquor sponsorship, who I literally found because I went on Twitter and I looked up Miami Ciroc. And then this guy came up and it said Chi-Chi, Chi-Chi from the Yayo. Mm -hmm. And it was this guy named Johan. And he became like an awesome friend and like a mentor of uh and he was always just a plug from then on so he used to always invite me to stuff and uh he invited me to puff house for the first time you know he does every year on new year's he has a party that goes on like for 24 hours mm -hmm. so you have to like wait until like 4 a.m and then you get to go and then you just stay there I don't know That's well, that, I that won't happen anymore but yeah, so it won't happen anymore. enjoy your experience <laughs> um so I'm not going to ask you if you saw anything crazy. I'm sure you, you didn't enter the inner sanctum, did you? No, no, I never got to go inside. Okay. Um, so speaking of that, do you think in general the entertainment industry is of the devil? Oh, God, that's so intense. You know, I don't think it's, I mean, I wouldn't know. The devil is such an intense word. Mm -hmm. But I will say from the things that I've seen and the people that I've encountered and the people that I love dearly who I am not no longer associated with or around it really can do something to you and really turn you into a different person and you have to be a certain kind of person to be able to to maneuver and to mold and I like I don't I don't know any other way to say it but I am not like I don't like to kiss butt and I also don't know how to like I don't know how to lie I know how to finesse, but without lying. And that could be my downfall, or that could be what gave me integrity, which is what I like to go with, because now that I look back, I feel like I have my reputation to hold on to and my integrity. But you have to be this like ruthless human to be able to deal with like that piece of shit world. And I'm not. So now is when I look back and I'm like, damn, I was so hardcore. I used to wear like a bitch face, but it was like my armor in a weird way. And so now that I'm like this well pieced, peaceful human, I'm like do, doing apology tours, saying bye, to, like saying sorry to people. Cause I'm like, I'm sorry. I used to be, I give you mean faces. Even you, I'll be like, sorry, I was a little standoffish, but it's just how I've survived by being standoffish. And that was the only way I didn't get like banged. <laughs> <laughs> Dude. I had to do that, okay? Do you think uh do you think you were ever approached by a demonic force um figuratively or asked to sell your soul figuratively in the industry and you uh, denied it in some way? I I I feel like yeah. I feel like there's so many ch times I should have done stuff and I was like, "No. Mm -hmm. No, thank you." And I I just can't I I'm telling you I can't I can't lie and finesse. And, you know, I, I laugh because I'll be on TikTok and I'll see shit from like Taz's Angels. Yeah, dude. And I'm like, I was in Taz's house with who? Who do you think with who? You know what I'm saying? Yeah. <laughs> and um, and I'm like, even while I'm there and I'm talking to Kat, <laughs> like I'm talking to the main, the main down bitch. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, what is happening right now? This is not. I'm not supposed to be here. And I always felt awkward. I was like, no, this is not for me. Even if I put on that clothes and was in the same place, I always felt out of place. But some people don't. And they like reptilianly adapt. And you can see it. And I've seen it in those few, those people that I, I and that's why I'm like, nah, I'm good. I don't, I can't be around those kind of people. It drives me insane. Do you think you could do a Taz Angel, Taz's Angel's house in 2024? 
You probably get cancer, right? Like you can't even be a pimp in 2024. It's it's done. Well, I feel like that Taz's Angels house was like you. Well, they call them now like the TikTok oh, creator houses or like um, uh, what is it called? A model a model house for yeah. promoters. Like they bring like the European girls in and they have to go out like four or five nights that's, a week. That still exists. Yeah, for that sure. still exists, but no one cares about it because it's not like <clears throat> hot. They're not making a Instagram account or something. Yeah, yeah. and it's not like hot. Puerto Rican girls with G-strings yeah. making out with each other. Okay. So nobody cares. But uh, that stuff definitely still exists. But that's what I'm saying. These are such Miami-coded things. Like, mm -hmm. where, of course, that happened in Miami. Of course, Diddy's having a 24-hour New Year's Eve party. Mm -hmm. Like, of course, this is all happening. Like, I don't know. I mean, it's that's what I'm saying. I lived a life. Yeah. I'm straight. It's good. You have those memories. Now, yeah. we, can, now we can move on. <laughs> Do you ever look at like Lipstick Alley and search your name or like websites like that and just to see if anybody ever said anything about you? I've, I've done that, but I don't, that's what I'm saying. I'm not juicy. I don't got no juicy <laughs> stuff. You found something? No, I didn't. I'm just wondering. <laughs> no, I've looked. I've looked. I've looked because I wanted to see, but I'm like, damn, that's what I'm saying. I'm like, I don't got any juice, but I'll just like Google other people's names. <laughs> mm -hmm. It's a little... A little guilty pleasure um if one of your friends is like getting canceled or maybe there's public backlash about one of your friends like what's uh what's something how do you handle that situation that only happened to me with with certain people and um those people don't want help you know what i'm saying those people don't want help but you i mean i always i i think collectively the culture just says like damn and like stays away you know but uh those people don't want help you just shut up and then you mind your business. See, I've learned that now. I just mind my business because when I used to speak up, mm -hmm. the, I, I mind you, I like wiped my Twitter because I'm not stupid. And I wiped my Twitter like five years ago or something. But uh, whenever you talk back to those people, they just go ham. So anytime I don't really say anything too outrageous on like Instagram or Twitter or whatever. But uh, when I used to, people used to talk shit to me and my friends like adrian or someone will come to my defense and be like guys she just throws parties like leave her alone it's like ain't nobody here trying to change the world like don't care don't pay attention if i say like miami sucks the mm -hmm. people are like what I'm like yeah relax i'm not like i mean maybe i don't realize my voice sometimes but i don't just don't pay attention but people who want attention pick at you pick at that stuff it's so man if people are getting canceled you just gotta let them be yeah well yeah, it's always good to like kind of like chill, let them do their thing, because then it fizzles out. But I personally remember each and every person, and eventually, um, I will destroy anybody that ever went up against me. I Wait, promise you what? That. <laughs> I promise you that. Don't you ever forget it. Oh Lord Jesus, you have a, you have them all written down. Oh yeah, I have a list. Oh my Lord. One way or another, they're, <laughs> they're gonna fall. Um, but yeah, man, so that's good. Just let them, let them bake. You no, know what I mean? Be the, be, the, be the better person. No, I'm a better, I'm the better person so much now. We talked about some of the later parties you did, Trap Paradise, Best Day Ever. What, Best Day Ever was a compilation of like which, which different parties throughout different regions. No, Best Day Ever was, um, <clears throat> the, I did it at Gramps and then I moved it over to Pool Party. And uh, that's when I, me and Jules kind of started working together, making it like, like awesome what the concept was but uh oh best day ever was just your it wasn't like when like brunch bounce would come down here and you guys collaborated on something like that right no 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 it's called greatest day greatest ever. day ever there we go that's why i was greatest messing day up ever. got you yeah yeah which which ended up being like a festival and it was all this new york stuff now i'm cool with them irv lives here now i know <laughs> i know i see <laughs> so him everyone so finds their way down to miami somehow but no it's good people that's what i'm saying all that was such a beautiful particular time like ain't no beef um, no, I didn't think you had any people. I was just wondering <laughs> if you uh, you ever talk to these people anymore. And what about Peach Fuzz? How did Peach Fuzz start? Were you part of it from the beginning? And is it still going on? What's what's the deal now? No, no, I wasn't part of it from the beginning. It started, um, I guess the official host was Ashley Outrageous back then. Mm -hmm. And um, it started with um, Raul, Adrian, and Press because they were besties. And, um, you know, Grand Central was a beautiful venue that like was super legendary to Miami nightlife scene. That's where Diplo was performing, where we saw him oh, and nice. got to hang out with him. But it was like Miami's only mid-sized venue at that time. And I'm telling you, like from Little Dragon to Duck Sauce and A-Track and Tyler, the Creator and all that stuff, like um, the Rolling Loud guys used to do MGK there and all these things there back then. <clears throat> but they had a, a venue on the second floor and they did this Peach Rose party and it was every Friday and there was no... 
you know, that was where Miami got to feel like a cool New York scene because every Friday it was like a loft space and they were playing R&B and like some new hip hop stuff, but it was really like a classic R&B party and it was like sweaty and hot as hell. You could go there wearing, mind you, this is like in Miami time where you had to have dress code and wear, you know, wear nice shoes and button up shirts but it was like you could go there not that anyone would but you could go there in like a wife beater and like slides if you wanted to and get in and so everyone was welcome and drinks were cheap like seven seven dollars or something but i was a fan just going there and ashley moved to new york and um at that time they approached me to host it so i hosted it every friday and that was my to me that's like my miami street cred which i'm very grateful for so those are that's family (laughs) do you think to be a successful dj now like outside of like the edm community if you're a producer but like say you're just an open format dj or just like a dj down here in miami um do you have to be in a crew and do a joint party where like the party has like six or seven djs on it and uh is that something that you have to do one and two um if you were to start a party right now what genre would it be and what group of people would you target that you know is going to make money for you or is going to be successful? I love DJ talk and I I know that you do too. So mm-hmm. I will enjoy this conversation. Um, I am so honored to have been basically, if I'm like a booth, like a booth rat, mm-hmm. I've been like behind all of you guys observing Not sleeping with, not there for nothing except either working or observe. I've been literally working, so I've been watching. Um, And at what? I've had to do like, I've just like you, I've probably been in the booth of like a thousand parties. Mm -hmm. Like it's more than that for sure, but I've been observing all of this. And um, in Miami, things are different now because you have your like open format dudes and that open format stuff that you're a certain kind of, you're gonna be in a certain kind of place and a certain kind of venue and a certain kind of like tier. And then there's like Miami sub scene, which is maybe cooler parties. And then there's like totally off the wall, where it's just about like a super underground community or something. Mm -hmm. But I don't know, I think if someone wanted to start now, it's different. And even like looking at like, you gotta come with your stuff, like your production stuff. You gotta come with like, I would imagine like your edits. You gotta create like a personality around yourself more now if you wanna start DJing, cause everyone's a DJ, right? So it's like, what tools do you have to like enhance the DJ experience? But if I was to start a party, which I mean, I feel like I create parties all like not, not as much anymore because I am, you know, kind of semi-retired as I tell myself. But uh, I love I'm a piano, but a- apart from I'm a piano, because now also there's like 10,000 I'm a piano mm-hmm. parties and Afrobeat parties. Yeah. I I am all about like intimate spaces. So I really want to do something small, intimate. Like there's a place here called Dante's. And like, I wish it could be like a Dante's place that just is playing like, I mean, I'm like a selection groupy so (laughs) or so it would be like lo-fi and like r&b edits and like uk garage and like all these cool things that only i want to hear and like only like a hundred people want to hear with me yeah Um, because that's what i was gonna ask you i know you've talked a lot about uh selection and i've even heard you you talked before about saying uh don't get mad if i say miami sucks or whatever but people do pay attention you know a lot of people listen to you and if you say miami sucks there's nothing good going on here um selection is so much better i've heard you say that sometimes on your social media (laughs) Uh, um selection is dope you know i've been following them from the beginning as well joe k everybody um but they did the love below down here which basically was like selection um did you ever go to those parties yeah yeah no i've been i was going to them since the beginning since the first ones too and it is beautiful what they what they did because they fostered a community of the people that would enjoy that and um that's what i'm saying it's so hard you have to they created a community and the community still exists Mm -hmm. but um you can only run that engine for so long. You can't keep like the Miami, the Miami infrastructure cannot hold that for very long. So it either has to be a pop up at some point mm-hmm. in time. But weeklies here are hard. There's like 
there's so much Miami has too many options it has too many variety there's too much different flavors there's too much venues I always think about that now because Miami has a huge venue issue right now there's too much there's too much real estate so people like if you want to throw a party there used to be if you want to throw a party there's only five spots that are having a party now it's only five spots that you know but there's like we can go to like I don't know Brickle and there's a really popping reggaeton party that we had no idea of like you know there's just too much stuff going on so it's hard out here but shout out to the love below they really I mean that's that's our little selection for sure and they do it well they I mean it's it might be too much real estate but it's good for like a DJs because it's like yeah. when, they, when they throw us aside like a you know a, a little lover that is scorned we get to go to another place, you know what I mean? Yeah, like we yeah, don't, we yeah. don't have to worry about the breakup so so yeah. bad. You know, that's true. You, guys you, never, have to... you can never feel comfortable. I've never in my life feel comfortable since I started completely DJing. Like you always feel like this can be gone at any any given moment. Do you ever yeah. feel like that when throwing parties and stuff? Yeah, you know, since I since I transitioned to the working world mm -hmm. and through lots of therapy and retrospect whatever it's called looking back into it i am used to living in chaos mm -hmm. and it's not until now that i am my only goal when i wake up every day is like a personal peace and i was like wow i just knew how to operate in chaos and nightlife and the hustle and the grind is a constant people are better me I, it was a constant anxiety. So it's like living in constant chaos and anxiety because I didn't know how to manage it. Now I do. So maybe it wouldn't be so chaotic. But I think that's what, it makes us like that though. Yeah, but I went from having a steady job and DJing for fun, now just DJing. So I've gone the opposite way. Yeah, you, yeah, you've, yeah. We've like yeah, done yeah. a 180. Done uh, yeah, I don't know. And I think I prefer probably being in an office, but we'll talk about that yeah. later too. Um, what's an experience where you, maybe you lost money or they had like a bar minimum and you didn't make it or like nobody showed up to a party um, and that kind of like, you had to like force yourself to do it again after that? Well, I always remember this one because it's a, I mean, it's an awesome thing, but then it also was like, I've thrown my, I've thrown tons of parties. I've thrown parties where the only 20 people show up. I've had weeklies where that's what I'm saying. Like, it's not very successful, but you got to do what you got to do. And I'm there getting like blackout drunk, trying to like make my, convince myself it's fun and things mm -hmm. are popping. But one of my awesome opportunities that I got was for an art basil. Was it an art basil? Well, for an art basil, I have the plug. Um, shout out to Mikey Larson. He works with Pharrell and um, he works closely with like Chad Hugo. For some reason, Chad Hugo was DJing stuff. Yeah, I remember. And yeah. so I was like, oh, I want to book Chad Hugo for a party. Wouldn't that be amazing to watch Chad Hugo DJ? And like, I'm going to get Sango to open and I'm going to do this and I'm going to do that. And it's going to be great. And I tried to pull together as much sponsorships and stuff as I could. And my home, my friend lent me his warehouse that was so huge and fi literally fits like, I don't know why I did that, like 5,000 people. And I booked Chad Hugo for $10,000. And I literally had to go to Wells Fargo and ask for like a line of credit <laughs> and ask my sister to pull a line of credit. I think I had like $5,000. So I borrowed $5,000 and literally sent it to Chad Hugo and tried to make, you know, the money back. And like, obviously my only costs weren't $10,000. It costs a lot of money to put together that, that thing. But I lost like 10, I probably lost like $10,000. Um, but it's okay, because guess what? I got the connection to Chad Hugo. So now if I wanted, which I did, when Rolling Loud came around and uh, NERD was performing, I got backstage passes. <laughs> I don't know. It's you know, but... Definitely, I, worked, definitely worth 10 Gs. That's a good It is worth 10 Gs <laughs> if it was for me for a photo and stuff. All but right. all of those like L's were really just like experiences, because now I know, hey, that's a great idea, but not in that way and not in that like framework so i don't regret it and also when you think about it ten thousand dollars comes and goes i mean it's not just a little bit but it comes and goes 
Yeah, it's true. It's uh, basically what we were talking about before. You wish you could do an internship. That's like an internship. In fact, that you're putting out your own money. You're not really getting money from it, but you gain so much experience yeah. from that. But nah, man, if I lost 10 G's, I'd, I'd, I'd be done. <laughs> I'm not getting back up. I mean, I would have had to like, like you said, finesse it somehow through a liquor sponsor or something like yeah. that. I would have tried to make it back. But yeah, that's uh, very brave of you to keep going. <laughs> no, yeah, we, we kept going. I mean, we, me, we kept going. You got to just keep going. So mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, you also I, you said uh, recently that Winwood's dead because there, if people don't know that are, that are listening now or watching, Winwood was a very artsy area. That's where Norma started, I guess, throwing her parties and yeah. where we saw that video of our Basil happens in there and everything. Um, and now they're starting to push people out because there's more condos coming in. There's going to be noise ordinances where a lot of these outdoor clubs are going to have to shut down. Um, and basically, it's not going to be a party community anymore. So you said it's dead. But uh, what, what's the future of areas like that? And what's the next area that's popping for Miami? I think people are going to like Little Haiti and Buena Vista mm -hmm. or Little Havana. Actually, I'm talking shit. People downtown, they're they're putting they're putting gas into downtown now. Yeah. Um, and so, you know, places like Mama Tried and stuff like that little real estate over under like that, like groundwork is where venues are going to start popping up. And like um, David Sinopoli has a spot there, like Jolene Sound Room and stuff mm -hmm. like that's what I see as the next spot like that's there's another place called jerk like you can see the little the little seedlings mm -hmm. and i'm like damn this is dope this is the uncharted they do parties in that jerk space? yes oh, it's ridiculous it's called mangrove it's so small oh nice but um okay that's the thing about miami these people just cycle around that's why you have to be a good person because they're moving somewhere else so this guy max max he's the one who does that and like i interned for him he used to run like mansion and stuff like that so like i'm i got the plug for that if i want to throw a party you know i mean so in in general people complain uh about their city but i, I not just miami i hear everybody complaining about yeah my city's dead my city. do you notice any market in the united states of america that has like a good party scene right now i only pay attention to what i guess my friends are throwing mm -hmm. but like la daytime party looks fun I don't say I don't think I don't know I don't know I feel like parties aren't really fun but mm. maybe my eyes are different but I I just don't feel it like it used to be like it just it's not the same something's different and I can't put my 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 and it's not that we're uh, <laughs> growing older I don't care what anybody says now we're growing older it's just different man I'm telling you it's yeah. true something's different I don't know what it is mm -hmm. it's not my job to fix it because I'm I can't change the world but it's the pandemic people that turned 21 during 2020 uh, never knew how to party and they've just carried that tradition on nobody knows how to party anymore man you think so i know for a fact that's what it is i saw it go down before my eyes it's a wrap man see george soros and everybody was trying to take down the american uh monetary system but they just took down the party scene they didn't know what they were doing who's so. george soros uh we'll, we'll talk about it you later, went too deep we? <laughs> you went too deep into some wormhole i don't even know what that is just say the powers that be that were trying to destroy america uh, they destroyed the party scene instead okay no uh, more litness no lit parties it's not lit, man, <laughs> whatsoever um all right now let's talk about you talked about you have a normal job or you've gotten you've you started to go to office jobs i wouldn't say it's normal mm -hmm. you started doing marketing um what but back then what's what's we good or uh good intentions in corporate? that was like my spinoff of me trying to be like okay what do i because um for the past 10 years i've basically been throwing parties um and consulting for different companies throwing parties i feel like i was throwing parties doing some event production stuff doing some f finessing influencer things and then also doing some brand consulting and so when people and brands come to miami i'm like getting the name my name is getting thrown around you know like oh we you know we have a budget with Puma, we're coming down for Rolling Loud. Can you help us pull together something? Okay, cool. I can. Oh, we're, I'm working with Bacardi. We need to put together like an event. Can you help us like promote it? Yes, I can. And so at some point, instead of going with like Norma Now Inc., I was like, oh, you know, let me create like a little marketing agency. And so I called it We Good and then extended it to like Good Intentions Inc. So that was like kind of what I was running under mm -hmm. for a while. But that was my little 
that's my marketing agency. Do you but... know? Do you know? Uh, does he clean face? Yes, yes. And he has, he has we good. good too. What's up with you and these names, man? Two dope know, boys and know, we good. You gotta watch out for. I these thought stuff. about it. If he wants to, he wants the name. He can have it. I guess. Give me something. I know. <laughs> maybe maybe you can collaborate for sure. He's got some nice artists now. No, he's a great guy. Um, game seven. Uh, you were or currently working there? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, cool. Um, who do they represent and who are they actually targeting? That uh, the market that you were working with they're an experimental experiential marketing agency based out of new york and la and um yeah they um i'm a you know i i'm a influencer marketing manager and i'm just <laughs> just doing my thing learning learning the working world i'm a working girl you have a dream job of everybody coming out of college or even like when i look on like linkedin i'm like dude that'd be a fun job you know what i mean working with social media and influencers it's 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 really a lot of fun i'm sure in real life right <laughs> I mean, it's just it's just the technical stuff of what goes on behind the scene. But I guess I've always been a behind the scene person. So mm -hmm. um, it's just interesting. I It's all interesting. I knew that when I accepted working, going back into the working force that um, it's like I'm going back to school. Like I was saying about wanting an internship. This is like an internship for me and like going back to school and learning like what's everyone been doing this whole time while I was finessing life oh they were doing this okay let me like learn figure it out you know it's interesting mm -hmm. Do you, were you a fan of dime and bounce magazines like who the owners uh you know the owners of game seven started those magazines back in the oh, day no, it was I like their basketball magazine basketball slash entertainment or whatever i mean i was never really into sports like that are you a, are you a sports person no 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 i don't yeah. know anything but i know they're sports guys <laughs> right 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 when i think about you, you talked about their experiential do they have a target like are they going to 18 to 35 like kids are they going to like adult like 55 year old adult who who are you guys targeting no it's uh the clientele is like uh you know like clients like uh, spotify timberland a nike like they're mm -hmm. um they're helping clients with whatever i guess campaigns or events that they're working so the the agency is just like a kind of like client services you know for for all the different companies that they work for so mm -hmm. i mean i would say the people that should know about game seven or people with money people who work at agencies <laughs> marketing the marketing uh person at, or at nike or whatever brand um needs to know about game seven but we're uh, to me it's like culture which is again like all i've been into so um yeah, they, they just try to put culture into every kind of project that they do. So what is culture? You don't have to answer because <laughs> I saw you do. I saw you do a like uh, a campaign with like Nike where like they gave you and like three dudes like a pair of sneakers and they followed you around or something yeah. like that. Right. Oh. OK, so I decided let me go on Foot Locker site. Right. I went to Foot Locker's Instagram. I didn't see one white person on the whole thing. So who are these people marketing towards? If I ask somebody like give me a job you know some people used to say like you want a job that's never going to make money be be like a you know study psychology or something like i don't know something something like that i think a job that would never make money in 2024 is like a white male um commercial actor or, or commercial <laughs> model yeah you know what i mean like do you not do you think white people don't buy things anymore I feel, I feel like and as a person that works in marketing you're privy to these meetings even if you might not be the person making these choices um what's happening man are we going extinct <laughs> You know, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. But I will say from like, uh, again, uh, this is even like off the record of not as a game of an employee or whatever. But I think that companies now are such in a push to have inclusivity mm -hmm. in everything. So like, you'll see all kinds of races, you'll see the all transgenders of all kinds, all ethnicities, everyone's acknowledged right now. Mm -hmm. And so I think people are just trying to like show that there is like, there is representation okay. across social medias. <laughs> so um, yeah, I don't know. I will say again, like that's what I'm saying. When I first started throwing parties, like there was like, I'm telling you, me and like I my first party was called Trap Paradise like I've been down with what I gonna keep calling the culture from the beginning and I used to go to FDR and me I would tell Jules and me and Jules advocated for trying to get like Metro Boomin down here and trying to get like all these trap people to come play music we tried to throw Trap Paradise at FDR and they would complain and say that there's too much guys and that no one wants to dance to that music and mm -hmm. no one wants to like it's too ghetto mm -hmm. 
And then it's like, ha, huh, look at y'all now. You know, so in my head, I mean, like, nobody dances though. Still, so <laughs> now, they might bring them in those places that serve bottles now, but it's still it's like a whack environment. No, no, for sure. But you know, back then we're like, hey, this is what's gonna be cool. Like, this is what the kids are hearing. This is what cool, but it's cool to uh, like what's gonna. We knew to foresee that this was like where things were headed. You know, so I feel like it's just that's people are just trying to push what culture is and that's what makes things cool but i i mean i guess my, I, my time is over is what you're saying <laughs> it's fine keep it moving now you, you work with influencers do you follow like influencers before you had this position like did you actually like check these people out or did you have to do some research you know i i am of the coin of like if i'm looking for influencers or if i'm looking for someone in something i just like do research mm -hmm. like if i want to know about like a I don't know, a Chicago, the, the Chicago skate scene, I'm going to hit up like some people I know from Chicago and ask them to direct me to the right person. Or like, all I have to do is go to a couple of different pages. Oh, damn. And then, um, and see, uh, and see what's, you know, uh, what's popping in Chicago. But I, I feel like you should ask people from their city about like what, where to go. And like, that's how I do like my research and stuff. Mm -hmm. But, uh, I also feel like I'm from like the blog era where it was like influencers before influencers. So like I do be like looking at certain things. But... All right, I understand. <laughs> I mean, and also it must not be a uh, fun time. A lot of if, they, if they're not getting back to you, if they don't they don't have email on their bio or something, because you yes. talked about this. Let's talk about one of your, uh, your famous well, TikToks here. It's kind of famous lack TikTok. of knowledge in the influencer space amongst people that I contact for my job to see if they want to be down with campaign deals and stuff. Some people are just totally not they don't know what's going on. Y'all need to pay attention to your emails. You need to check your message requests. You need to be on it. If you're trying to get booked and busy, like, you need to be checking your stuff. I gotta learn from my, I can't be talking like that when I like my job. Oh man, whatever, <laughs> forget these people. What I wanna know is why are these people so appealing just cause they have a following? If there's somebody like maybe like me or somebody else that's willing to do mad creative things, but we don't have like the numbers, like what do your bosses appreciate more quality content or like Alex Earl, like saying two things about a a, a product? You know, I, I think um, whether it's um, the place I work or, or just like my belief, which I think it it's the same. In the influencer space, we have a responsibility to navigate and dictate how business is going to be conducted. And that means from the, the, the deals, the partnerships, the amount of money that we offer these people and the kind of creative that we put together. I think gone are the days that people are like shamelessly following something. Obviously, there's mega creators like an Alex Earl who could say, oh, my God, look at this new toothbrush and it'll go popping. Mm -hmm. But for the people who are just getting started in like an influencer space, like people aren't dumb and you can't just like pick up a pick up a product and be like hey look like people it's too obvious and people don't want to support that kind of stuff so i have took it that in my in with both in my work and just even the way i conduct myself because i'm a creative person too um you know you are too like even if i'm getting paid a hundred bucks or ten thousand bucks i'm gonna put my all mm -hmm. into it because i care about my stuff and i care about the things that i endorse i also don't just take random endorsements or random checks and so uh through my job i've been you know and, and my 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 company feels the same way like we're here i want to set like fair prices fair rates and like also create compelling content so um again i'm just so thankful that a place like the place i work at allows me to practice and to be able to like see it in real time work and so i've had a lot of fun learning yeah. at my job i feel like entering the workspace really like helped me change my life they don't do it as uh in your face now they won't show you they'll just be behind them and, like on a desk or something while they're doing like a dance or something like that that's a oh. that's how they do it now people are getting paid a lot of money and people are getting all these opportunities and it is very discouraging and so what sucks is like you either play the game or you choose not to or you can semi play the game but at this point and you know there's this guy isaac likes from i like you yeah i know who that is and um you know, he had a really fun, funny saying, which would be on his page, um, something that he did for New Year's. He's not scared to be corny. Mm -hmm. And you know what? Like, fuck it. Like, just try. There's another saying that ASAP Rocky said, which is like, 
who are you going to look you're going to look down on people for trying since when did trying not be was not cool like why don't you just try so again since i have a day job now i be trying all day that's why i'm like i'm a fitness girly i'm a wellness girly i'm corny i'm whatever because at the end of the day corny if corny means that i'm trying then let it be because everyone's attention span is already so short like <laughs> mm-hmm. you just need to like do whatever you want to do so i feel like it is very discouraging but at this point like just go for it all right so working in a company would you rather be a person that has a salary but you're never going to be top dog right but you also get all your flights uh taken care of you get you can reimburse for hotel rooms you get to send out to all the events like whatever is going on um but you're never going to be the big boss or would you rather have your own company and you get to do whatever you want but everything comes out of your pocket eventually the era that i'm in right now i would rather learn Mm -hmm. and you know be in the in an environment where i can learn and if that means that i don't work for myself then let then that then that's okay with me (laughs) because what it means is i get to learn from other people who are bosses and who who do know more than me um i think so much of working for yourself is like you have to constant i mean at least myself that's why you have to con- you constantly questioning if you're doing things right you're constantly questioning if this is the right path i've been doing i mean you know because you're you're fin- you're like this is living working for yourself you've done every job you're doing every job right now i've done every job i've made my own flyers i make my own rcp page i've i've uh uh i've done the door i've counted the money i've been a bartender i've uh put together the equipment i've paid the bills i'm the pun writing the checks i'm the one setting up i'm the one printing the shirts i've definitely printed a shirt at some point in time like i'm design i'm doing all this stuff you know so at some point i'm like oh it's okay i i i want to chill and like take a step back and see like stop making a dollar out of 15 cents i kind of want to see like what happens when they actually don't have 15 cents they have like fifteen thousand dollars or fifty thousand dollars i'm like wow this is how it looks like when you do things yeah, with, with resources i was like the only time i've ever stayed at nice hotels was when i was working for team epiphany <sighs> i was like any hotel they would always make sure they're at the best hotels i would never in my life spend money like that yeah 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 so it's it's always good to sometimes work on for a, those companies on a right? client. yeah you do work <laughs> you get to you get to you know spend it on the client's dime you want the qu- the best quality work you know you gotta stay in quality sleep that's right um and you've worked with a lot of brands so real quick one brand that you thought was gonna like pop off and be the next big thing and they just never happened i mean i can't remember if that's a, that's i guess the bad thing right i can't remember if they didn't pop off yeah because they never blew up okay well how about uh maybe an artist that you thought was gonna be the next big thing and never made it or never made it as big yet in their career damn no i don't want to say that because then people okay I don't, don't say it i don't want to just know artists right, this, that... this is easier best club that's not around anymore oh damn grand central yeah Yeah. okay (laughs) we knew that one we knew that one also have you ever seen uh you've seen apartment life or culture.fm i've seen the apartment life ones okay well there's like three or four others that are doing it yeah i saw your i saw your story do you think do you think we were the first people to do that when you did your jameson thing and you had your house party yeah um (laughs) i mean that was the life back then but i'll say like what i said earlier intimate spaces is where it's at right now i think people want to feel close to one another again it's not like there's there's people for everything but i think i don't know i enjoy quality and shit so i'm not just like ruthlessly buying a show to like a i don't know the dead mouse concert or something like what nothing oh, okay i was like <laughs> see this is what this is what i don't like i don't like showing what i'm doing next i don't like you being able to see it i just want to like show you so let's get to it uh oh, so you well, talk also i what? my tiktok what? is literally my little hidden secret place because i don't i talk i like do all of my intimate thoughts are on tiktok i know that's what i'm gonna ask you about you talked about oh my god you, you should never be scared to try things like and i feel like recently maybe you at because you started working with influencers and stuff like that you've just been trying mad different stuff and just throwing things out there sometimes a random rant sometimes a, like a produced video sometimes an interview like just all kinds of different content so uh has it been frustrating when something that you think is popular 
um, doesn't pop off that you put a lot of effort into, but then something that you don't even care about, like the Raul Alejandro or something has like 17.8K right there, man. Yeah, so. And that's just what you filming a concert video. I could spend like 16 hours editing a video and it gets like 200 likes or no, 200 uh, views. So what, how do you uh, combat that? See, TikTok, I know there's like an actual, or from if you watch all the TikTok videos, I guess, like there's an actual like algorithm and a way to go about it. I don't have time for that. I also am playing around with content now and I, I'm grateful that I have more of an Instagram following or an engaging Instagram following because I don't even have a lot of a lot of followers. But um I've been using TikTok as like what I would call like my Instagram stories. Mm, like because okay. I used to and I it's like, you know, you go on Facebook and you can see it'll be like on this day three years ago and it'll show you like a flashback of your story and it's like so embarrassing. Mm -hmm. But Back like in Snapchat days, I know people are on Snapchat now. I don't get it. They're like paying people to be on Snapchat yeah. or something. It's weird. It's made a resurgence for sure. Yeah, no, they're definitely paying people. But back in the day, you used to Snapchat and you used to follow people that way. And I used to put up mad stories. And now I am I like to stay mysterious and I like to keep my business to myself. But I use TikTok as my stories. So if I was like get caught off in a car, I'd be like, it's so annoying. <laughs> I got cut off. Miami drivers, you guys suck. And I, I feel in my head that TikTok's like my own little corner of the universe because I talk about like my sobriety there and I talk about all my little secret things that I don't want to tell my Instagram followers. But uh, I think that's, the, that's the way, though, I think. I mean, it, it is very weird. And I don't know. I'm, I don't want to say I'm not really trying. And then I'm trying sometimes and I make like the, the nicely produced videos. I make them with the intention of posting them on Instagram Okay. or but now I also find it fun, which I'm sure you do, too. When you get really cooking on a video, I'm like, damn, this is a good one. But yeah, sometimes they don't hit, you know, um, I put up a video like yesterday of me at some event. Mind you, it took me like an hour to edit, but I was like, damn, this is a really good video. And it's like. 4,000 views. I'm like, oh man, I, like, I thought that was, you know, um, that was that going to be the one, but it's all consistency. That's popping for me, man. You're lucky with the 4,000 views. <laughs> um, so do you let numbers control your content? Like the things that have gotten, like you talked about a, a hair salon. That's like one of your number one. Um, yeah, tech, like, so would you do more like reviews of businesses and stuff? Or do you like to just do whatever comes to your, to your mind? I like to do whatever comes to my mind. I actually went back to that hair salon, so I'm going to probably put another video up at that okay. same hair salon. Here come the numbers. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah. But, uh, you know, probably I should do more of that. But I, I'm just too lazy and I want to do whatever I feel like it. That's why I will say I am trying. I don't know the medium, but I obviously must not want it that bad because then I would probably just highlight more like... Miami businesses I checked out because those those things reviews hit numbers so if I was to go to like come with me to check out this new seafood restaurant oh my god I had this and it was so yummy people people would probably like it but I don't want to do that yeah so I've had like a little like what am I doing should I stick with like me running me with my wellness another second I'm like should I go with like my party content because it makes you know numbers too when I'm interviewing drunk people but I'm like, now nah, I'm not the drunk. Now nah, I'm not a drunk person. I don't want to yeah. do that. So I'm having a little uh, midlife crisis, but a TikTok crisis. Yeah, having a a, uh. a content midlife crisis. Of like, what am I doing here? But it's all right. It's not the end of the world. Do you feel pressure to talk about like politics and stuff that's going on? You personally, and then also as a as a marketer, what if one of your clients decides to go rogue and go crazy, like one way or the other, politically or like with an issue? Like, how do you deal with that? As, coming from a company perspective, they they call that like brand safety and stuff. So people. It definitely I know to stay away from like before I even worked anywhere like I have like I said before I wiped my Twitter as soon as I saw people getting murdered oh yeah and crucified from like pulling up old tweets hmm. I went on that website real quick and I deleted every single thing because I had had Twitter since the beginning hmm. so I definitely had like some Drake quotes and stupid stuff um but uh I stay away from it that's what I'm saying I'm too whether it was like to protect myself or whether it was like because I was a wussy I always stayed away from stuff also I really don't know that much like <laughs> okay so like I don't have any thoughts on politics because I would I don't know enough to speak on it so I will 
just shut up if I don't know enough. That's a very you refreshing ask, answer because most people, it doesn't, that doesn't matter, man. I'm just going to say the first thing that comes to the top um, of their... No, especially not politics stuff because that's what I'm saying. They'll catch you slipping. The that's It's only until now that I have the confidence to say there's like few things I know about and it's like, I know about DJs. <laughs> I know about music. I know about throwing parties. And now I know about like wellness stuff. But don't ask me about like politics. I don't know about that stuff. <laughs> okay. Um, there seemed to be a point in time when you were completely done with Miami. You were ready to move. I don't know if that's really the case, but that's just how it comes across on social media. Maybe you didn't want it to go like that. And it was just like a random thought that you put out there. But what is lacking here in for that what you do or just in general? Is it being creative? Because I, I feel it too. Like I don't feel creative here. I feel like it's a great quality of life. I, you know, I, I like running. I like doing stuff outside. It's dope. But I don't feel the push or like a, living in another city so what do you think it is missing here i i try not to be like a negative nancy and try not to say it out loud so much but if i have a miami rant miami i or at least myself i have not found like a community of people who like inspire and motivate me it's like few and far in between um there's like a person here and there's a person there but it's different right because i go up to new york i'm sure you go to new york and all you have to do is go all you have to do is go one day to work all you have to do is go one day to the streets all you have to do is go and have a, a lunch meeting with someone and like i can go out and eat and i go meet up with my friend hannah cider and it's me eating with hannah cider and then we're we're hanging out with our other girl she's a model and then we're hanging out with vaughn and he's a a stylist and then we're hanging out with with what with moma and he's a d and i'm like bro this is just day one mm -hmm. day two I'm, I'm and that's the thing it's not that i went out to go look for these people it's that there's like that energy and everyone's doing something they're not just talking shit and i'm sure you saw now because you've had a few years here miami's a city where it's like what do you guys even do for a living? Why don't people want to talk about, like, why are you just a, I see you in the streets. I'm, I see you out and about. Cool. You come to my parties. I have never heard what you do. Why don't you just talk to me about it? Why are you so scared to tell me that you're an RN? Why are you so scared to tell me that you work reception at a, at a, at a whatever, at a doctor's office or at a waxing spa? That's okay. You have a job, dude. That's okay. But I feel so alone here in a way where I'm like, and it's only until few moments and times where like, look, I get to link up with you and we can ch chat about stuff. And look, like I'm inspired. I'm like, damn, what are you using? Like now I have something that I feel like, damn, this is my creative community, but it's only few and far in between. And um, I'm just tired of it. And I'm, I, I, when I was younger, it was okay. And I can chase it more, but I want to be inspired and motivated. I, if not, I'm gonna get stale and I'm not gonna be able, I'm not gonna do, uh, you know, I'm just bored. So I'm like, nah, I wanna go outside. Even New York is so cool. I mean, I get it that like you New Yorkers are so over it. That's why you guys come down here. But every day is like an adventure. Mm -hmm. Here, I'm born and raised from here. And like my high school, everyone went to the same Miami-Dade College. Everyone studied, um, business management, business administration. Everyone went and became like an RN. Like no one took the chance because it's a very Miami thing. You get comfortable here and you will be comfortable. You work at a sneaker store. This person will be working at the retail store until they're 45. They will never leave. Miami sucks you in and makes you think you're complacent. That's mm -hmm. the word here. And I'm, you can come here and chill but I'm not, chill. I don't want to chill. That's not me. It wasn't me. And I feel anxious here. I'm like, what's going on? Y'all are boring. I shouldn't be the coolest person in the room. You know what I'm saying? I understand. Sorry. No, completely understand. Um, I saw you do the Tokisha thing and I've seen you do some other stuff before, like maybe with Fade or something like that. But like, are you into the Latin uh, market stuff that they do down here at all? Or that doesn't really interest you to throw events like that? I am when it comes from like a, yeah, like a cool reggaeton angle mm -hmm. i'm more recently trying to like associate with my roots i yeah. think i think growing up here i don't know why i um so 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 silly my, i joke around with my mom i'm like i have feel more comfortable at like a a jamaican the party with mm -hmm. with with addy and them than i do if you take me to some reggaeton some reggaeton latin club in miami right. i feel awkward there and i don't know why or I don't know if I, I think I disassociated with like, that's corny. And that was like, 
It was corny back then. That's what I'm saying. Like that was corny. Dude, um, I love 2000s <laughs> like reg- reggaeton now, but like back then I was like, yo, these guys are just biting off of like Soldier Boy and stuff, the way they dress, everything. <laughs> like the, the beats are corny. It's like hip hop stuff from like uh, 99 and 2000, but they're doing it in 2005, 2006. But now like I love playing this stuff because it's yeah. just like it hits hard. It's, it's it fun. It was a very different scene in Miami, at least like mm-hmm. the parties. It was super segregated. There was like segregation and like parties and scenes and you're like oh those are like the latin kids those are the refs those are the cuban kids those are the south like you know and so i always gravitated more towards the hip-hop stuff and more towards like urban people and stuff and so that's where i kind of laid and felt comfortable and so now i'm like norma like that's like i want to get to know my culture naturally so i'm like oh let me go out to them and you know so i'd be like bumping raul alejandro i'm a huge (laughs) raul alejandro fan but like by myself like so I was at that concert and I recorded all that stuff. And I was like, oh, yay. No, he's dope because uh, I'm a production person. I don't, I mean, so that's why it doesn't even matter like what he's saying and what language because I'm always, even rap, like I don't even care what lyrics. Yeah. I'm always about the production. His production is dope. It's very yeah. space age. Um, so that's cool. So do you think that uh, mainstream, I guess we want to say like Hollywood or anything will ever have a hub down here or is it only going to be the Latin side of like Universal Music Group or whatever? Or do you think they're going to have real offices of every type of music uh, eventually in Miami people, or movies as well? And stuff? People are saying and, um, you know, that's like so Miami also for people to be like, just wait, just give it a couple more mm-hmm. years. How much more years? I I'm not going to stay here forever. I'm not going to have say because this is my, you know, like, I, I, I have to stop myself and be like, again, this is what's been swirling in my head for like a year or two, which is why I have not, I haven't, again, we are so spoiled here. And that's why you're here too, right? Mm-hmm. We are spoiled. The, the, the quality of life in Miami is so beautiful. And every single time, it's like that Chingy song. It's like, every time I'm I try to leave. Back. Yeah. Because gotcha. I'm like, man i hate it here and then i go somewhere else and it's beautiful and it's cute and then i come back and i'm like ah i have my car i can drive i can go run and i run by the water and then you go and get your cafecito and then the lady's so nice to you and you're like oh this is why i love it here this cuban lady just called me like amor you know Mm -hmm. and like you do all these things and you're like ah this is my city i'm good i I don't want to go anywhere but yeah i just i know that it's comfortability and i know that i won't I won't be able to grow if I don't change. But like you're, you left your hometown. Mm -hmm. This is my hometown. Whether it's whether like it's a cool place or not, I never left my hometown. I'm not gonna let that be. That's that's the thing that propels me to be like I'm moving to New York like next week, (laughs) because I'm like (laughs) no way that I'm gonna have never left my hometown. You left. You've moved like five times. You know. Well, I always thought that too. Like when I first like as a kid moved to New York, I was like. Um, yeah, these these people, these city kids must hate it. They must want to go down to the beach or like down to like a party school down south or something. But like, nah, they like, no, nah, we're good here. Nobody wanted to leave. So I don't know, man. Some people are just like down, down to stay or they maybe they have everything they wanted back then uh, in that city. So they didn't have to move. Yeah. It was exciting because everybody had to go there. But now you don't have to go anywhere. And that's the problem. Nobody goes out. Nobody does anything. But let's hypothetically say you're going to move to New York City. Have you been looking for apartments and stuff? I have gotten that far. Well, if, if you haven't, we're going to do it right now. <laughs> we're going we're gonna to look for some because I want you to I want people out there to see the problems that we're working with or anybody else is working with that wants to move to uh the oh, big yes. old city all right yeah well you're looking in manhattan no well, that's what i'm saying you, you can give me your, what neighborhood i, I want to go. go to um to my sister lives in bed sty okay so we'll, let's see beverage stuyvesant right there we're gonna put that in we're gonna take manhattan off you all know right. i didn't know that's what bed sty yeah, <laughs> you know it's just a little shortened version of that what's the max we're working with you don't have to see your actual max but just give me a number to work with here like three thousand. damn okay balling over game <laughs> game seven. Oh, no no geez, I'm, that's not my max i just you know i'm just saying all right we'll do that and let's see what we got here all right we have let's see, see it, but it tries to trick you because yeah okay okay is there a certain neighborhood of bed that you like or like a certain area do you want to be closer to the city let's By just prospect park okay see that's what's so beautiful about new york because you guys can this new yorkers like there's a beautiful park you can go running in i mean 
dude, there's this is actually kind of fire. But 20, this is really expensive. Twenty nine hundred for what is this? Uh, nine hundred square that's feet. That's a two bed though. It's not bad. It's not bad. Four I will rooms. Say. It says four rooms. Two wait, four rooms, two beds. That's weird. Two beds, four rooms. Yeah, bath, oh, bathroom and a kitchen. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, that is expensive. That's why I'm saying I still yeah. I pay. I pay right now in Miami like less than two thousand five hundred for a two bedroom apartment. So this is why I'm like Jesus Christ. I know, dude. And when I came down here, I was like, this is amazing. Even though the rents have gone up like 50, 60 percent since I since yeah. I first moved down here, but it's still not that crazy around here. So um, these I mean, are this things is beautiful, but I also don't have two thousand nine hundred dollars a month. Yeah. For this. Dude, these are things we got to think about. Um, and I'm sure you think about this all the time. Or would you be willing to live with a roommate, or you got to live by yourself? No. You got to be. See, see, I, I would. I thought about that, and I was like, if I move and dislocate my whole entire life, then I'll even get a studio because here we are I'm in your new apartment grown. right here. Yeah. See, that's what I'm saying. This is fire. <laughs> see, okay. It's not bad. It's a, re a renovated kitchen and bathroom here. I don't know if that's renovated. That looks pretty aged. <laughs> no, they they have they have the new black faucet. You yeah. know, that's how you know it's that's renovated. How you know they Went yeah. to Ikea. Trust me, dude. I, I I I renovated a lot of the of this amazing studio you see behind you with, <laughs> with the moving walls and stuff. So I went to every Home Depot in the greater Miami area, every Lowe's. Um, so yeah, dude. Well, hopefully you figure out uh, what you want to do. Yeah. And... I've, I've, in search, I've decided that home is in my heart. So and I do need to decide. <laughs> Yeah. I knew literally my friend yesterday was like, Norman, what do you want? I'm like, I don't know. Okay. But my rent, my lease is up in like two months. Oh, so no. the world is going to decide for me. God, Jesus, Jesus, take the wheel. For real. <laughs> um, let's talk about the Lord. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> That's I, I, I saw you go on the Vu. And I, I'm interested. I'm interested in Vu. I listen to the Vu podcast, but I've never actually gone to uh to that church. Um, it, is church has it was it big for you growing up, or is it are you getting more into it now? You know, church is just a place where I'm like, literally, I'm like, where can I just go hear p people talk about positive things? Because. Mm -hmm. I realized I just want to hear good things. I literally hear podcasts all day. I read books, self-help books. And at some point I'm like, I don't know what else to do. You know, fitness stuff can get really culty, mm -hmm. run clubs and all this stuff that I do, which I already do. And I'm just like, what else can I hear? So I'm like, let me turn back to the good old number one step, the Lord. That's right. You always come back to the Lord, man. For we're, real, yeah. We're, we're all the prodigal son. We're eventually all going to come back. <laughs> um, and I was going to ask you about that. About So you've transitioned from nightlife people to like fitness people but those people can be weirdos too so have you yeah. run into that at all like people with egos the same way artists have egos like these fitness fitness guys or women it's um i'm still trying to read the room mm -hmm. um and that's why i guess like it's the same observation stuff it's it's very interesting and i'm trying to be like a positive clean optimistic person i'm not trying to i am i avoid clicks i that stuff is to me red flags and so you know that's what kept me away from going to church because i'm like oh they're too clicky for the lord i guess you know but uh or like fitness stuff like run clubs there's tons of run clubs and there's run club there's of, of course you're going to naturally make different crews and and friends so i i like i i kind of take pride in being like alone i'm i saw this quote by rupaul but i'm like i'm an introvert disguised as an extrovert and so i'm like a loner but i i'm so lucky i get to pop around even when i go out at night like if i go to a party if i was to go see someone oh i'm gonna go see you spin i go by myself because i know i'm gonna bump into people but i know i also can like leave when i want to i decided i'm like you know vu vu looks like a beautiful welcoming community and i was like let me take away all my like negative thoughts about like oh this is a hype beast church or like oh this is like a weird place i feel uncomfortable but i was like you know what i've been around so many people clout chasing and clout chasing people who used to try to talk to me just because of like who i knew or what i was around i think i can handle fake people if it's even fake church people i've, I've dealt with like clout chasers i'm i'll take some clout chasing for god <laughs> I want to try to run through some of these things. And you just mm -hmm. give me first thing at the top of your mind. You said a, you, a girl came up to you one day and was like, "Girl, the older women are still running things around here, right?" They said they said that to you, and you you, you put up a whole story oh, up yeah, about yeah, this. Oh yeah, yeah, that girl. And and you were like, "Dog, I'm not old. Like, what are you talking about?" But as we like uh, 
get more into our career or whatever, we're not always the youngest person in the room. We yeah. end up being the mentor where there's new people coming. I hate being that person. I always like being the younger person. Like, ah, I'm going to, I'm going to, you know, take on the whole world by myself and yeah. all these old people don't know what's going on. But now I've turned into that. You know what I mean? So how is that transitioning into being the mentor rather than the mentee? Uh, it's weird, but I'm, because I'm in a different space and I'm more confident and comfortable, I'm okay with it. So I wasn't like, I wasn't offended, but I don't have much patience nowadays. Mm -hmm. And again, because I'm I'm usually in like a place where people are drunk. And so when she said that to me, I was like, that's I'm like, what? And she, you know, and she's like, oh, well, you're older than me. I'm like, yeah, girl. But in my head, I was like, relax, like chill, you know, but uh, I don't just have patience anymore. So it's I don't think I'm in a I don't think I'm a mentorship st like perfect staple of it i also don't have like the, that's i'm i'm in a very selfish era maybe mm -hmm. like catch me on the flip side in like a year and i'll be more like centered but right now i'm like leave me alone because <laughs> i'm like i'm coming and i'm like recreating you know i'm repurposing and recreating myself so um i'm i'm down to always give people advice but it's not going to come out the most clean beautiful cutest way right now <laughs> okay my original like friends of mine and i'm sure yours as well as uh they get older they get families they get kids whatever and they they move on and don't come out to nightclubs or even events or even daytime events and stuff like that so i find myself personally like having to like re-up acquaintances and friends over and over i feel like a vampire like i stay the same age everybody else gets older <laughs> but i just keep staying the same age do you ever feel like that like you have to constantly meet new people and for sure. And I mean, I, I think being a woman, too, it's weird, right? Because then everyone's getting pregnant or getting married or whatever. And I feel you. Yeah. I mean, you look at Facebook and it's like embarrassing. Not it's not embarrassing. <sighs> I mean, I use that kind of word each year, but it's uh, it's enlightening to see what uh, what other people are doing that you used to like go to high school with or something. But uh, I'm truly starting from scratch. You know, uh, so much of my life, I I, I feel like, again, it was chaos. And I also was um surviving off of like what was given to me. So I, you know, maybe about two years ago had to create new boundaries for myself. You know, I also thought I don't really I didn't even know what boundaries were if I really think back on it. And and that and that's, again, why I was kind of I'm still on this apology tour where I'm like, hey, I remember when I used to invite you to that party i used to be the friend that I'd be like come to my party on friday I'd be like no i don't know i'm not feeling well oh come on you're being a little emo stop mm -hmm. being not fun come on it's it'll be fun i promise i'll take care of you i'll give you free drinks and then i'll buy you food and then come on and they were like no no thank you i don't want to and i'm like man you're never fun you never come out and i was like that mm -hmm. and now i recognize that these people were putting boundaries up and we're saying I'm not comfortable please no thank you and I was like not respecting those so I created boundaries and I lost a lot of friends and it's very unfortunate because I think boundaries are an expression of love an expression of telling you hey I love you I'm trying to tell you how to love me so we can have like a healthy loving friendship together mm -hmm. so I have I'm actively recruiting new healthy friends <laughs> and uh, I would love to make new friends. But with this new version of who I am, because I do feel like it's the most best, respectful, happy, well, self-aware person. So, um, yeah, I need new friends, but also I'm OK. And I like being with myself, too. <laughs> All right. And you also talked about you, you dating uh, sites before. What, what was your dating app of choice? Oh, Lord. I am. I don't know what the hell I'm doing. I was. I'm on. I'm on Raya right now. Dude, how'd you no, get? No. How'd you get on Raya? That's what I want to know. What, what? Did you have a hookup or something? What's well, up? Is it is, is it harder for dudes to get on Raya? Because back when I was trying, I never quite made the cut, man. <laughs> I can send you a. Little, I, I'm uh, good. I'm, I don't need that one. I have a girlfriend, but uh, yeah, dude. Well, um, I I, I lied because I did. I actually quit Raya a couple months ago. I'm on a hinge now, mm -hmm. but uh, I was on Raya and I I. I remember I was on it in the beginning, beginning, and then I, uh, yeah, I don't know. It was easy to get on it, but I think because I was like early on and then it was cheaper too. It was like maybe 10 bucks a month. But now if you join it, it's $20 a month and nobody really says anything. You just go in circles talking. Hey, 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 hey. So it's such, it's such a waste of time. I was just on it to like clout and like look at who was on it and be yeah. nosy. But I decided to cancel it because I'm like, yo, I'm spending 20 bucks a month just to be nosy. And then, of course as life is um 
I saw my homeboy who used to work at Nike works at Hinge now. And so when I saw he worked at Hinge, I was like, yo, what's up? You got like the hookup? He's like, yeah, do you need like, if you want a Hinge X membership, I got you. So I was like, oh yeah, hell yeah, I want the Hinge X membership. So I went on Hinge, I made a profile and I have like the paid membership. Okay, but it up. you got the super VIP I Hinge. got the VIP hookup at Hinge. So I've been like, I've been testing out my, my chatting. Hi. Man, I'd be a, wasting people's time to be honest. I waste people's time. It's a me. video game. It's fun. It's, it's a video a, game. It doesn't honestly. have to. It doesn't have to like Turn equal, equal anything in real life. Yeah. Um. And but you said you needed somebody. I've, I've heard you say that you needed somebody creative. Have you changed your opinion at all? Can you be with a regular guy now? I I'm open to just healthy people. You know, I I have by a fault used to be attracted to cool people mm -hmm. whatever cool people means it's so stupid and subjective but i like the cool guy but the cool guys are losers <laughs> and the cool guys are bums so i'm not into cool guys no more i'll take a nice uncool guy with a with maybe particularly a some kind of steady income and maybe like goes to therapy or something i'm okay with a non-cool guy so i'll take that guy that wears vans or something okay <laughs> i don't know what they wear i'm gonna bring vans back vans, <laughs> vans are popping just like the pack told us um do you ever look back at your tumblr i saw i saw you put up something really quick there see this is old though i think i was gonna um yeah. this isn't old. but look at this you, do, have you have you read this recently no, I don't want to. Okay, because you say a lot of things. You talk about like alcohol. You talk about this stuff, but I feel like you've changed or completed a lot of goals that you talk about in here, and it's crazy. Like if you look at yourself now, compared, this is only two years ago. So, I don't know, man. Maybe you should check out your Tumblr. Maybe I should look at some of this stuff. Look at these parties. Well, yes, yeah, Basel like, Paradise. Yeah, it used to be linked to the website, so that's why I was like, oh, this is cool. Mm -hmm. um but yeah it is really cool to see those kinds of things um i told myself i was gonna secretly start writing stuff and make it like a diary but then i never continued to do it <laughs> i think you should check it out and your your art basil guide you seem a little frustrated this year do you think people jacked your idea or you just don't care anymore i didn't care because i make money but it was annoying trying to like make sure people don't copy and copy and take it but mm -hmm. I make a couple thousand dollars off of it. Okay. It's okay. honestly was a genius idea, but I'm grateful that I can give people like a key to the city, basically. <laughs> All right. You were no, you were known, or maybe you are still known as the curator of cool. That was Norman now, or maybe is Norman now. What is cool now? Not being cool. All right. I think so. Being chill. <laughs> right. We win. You know what I think too? being cool is taking care of yourself and i think that's like one of the one of the many good things that came out of the pandemic is like never not working is so lame mm. like you need rest and you need to like it's okay to have like a mental health day or whatever but uh i think too something that i'm sure you can observe from miami i think it's everywhere like i don't think overconsumption is is as important like in every sense, right? Like clothing and like materialistic stuff, but like it's not cool to be so lit and drunk and uh, drugs and show off and stuff like that. It's like cooler to take like quiet luxury, you know? Mm -hmm. And like, yeah, I don't know. For some reason I feel like, I don't know. Again, I don't know if it's because I've changed, but like when I was younger, I used to be like, yo, who's getting the bottle? Let's do shots table service like i want to be in vip like that stuff is still relevant in certain spaces but i don't know i feel like people would way rather be in like a dirty warehouse party now mm -hmm. than they would want to be in like a bottle like a towel nightclub or something like the, obviously there's spaces and stuff for that but like i don't think that's as cool anymore and so like for any age i don't think like it's not just because you know you've done it all i think even kids that are just starting don't like that vibe at this point yeah so, be well, so, someone told me it's like because they don't have money well yeah that's <laughs> true for sure but i was like how was we doing it i was going to mansion or whatever when i was 21 and mm -hmm. i don't know i would get in with a promoter and go drink free because i was a girl or something but guys would used to pay you used to pay your 20 bucks and you get in the club or whatever but um I just think like now when I think, honestly, it'll be Friday night. Let's say I even just feel like a little funky and it's Friday night and I want to go out. 
what is there to do on a Friday night? There's nothing to do. And I'll be like, what are the kids up to? And I'm like, where do I even look at where the kids are doing? I don't know what's happening. There's nothing happening. I can't. Some people will be like, I don't even know. Someone will be like, yo, uh, Katrinata's in town. Oh, yo, uh, this person's in town. Where can we take them? I'm like, I don't know. I don't know. Go to Red Rooster, I guess. There's nothing else. Is that really what we have come down to? That is just <laughs> go to Red Rooster and that's it. Like, there's nothing here. So I, I don't know what the hell cool, cool, what's happening cool. But to me, I'm like, I think it's cool that I was staying. I was at the gym at like nine, at like 9 p.m. walking. I'm like, whatever. I find I find that way cooler because, I mean, that's what I'm saying. I'm like semi-retired. So I'd be like, look at this loser at the club. Mm-hmm. You know? I know. I, know. I, do, I do that uh, sometimes, too. That's just because they didn't book me. So. Yeah. <laughs> so whack that bottle service is so whack just because they won't book me at bottle service clubs. So I'm like, who wants to play who wants to play for promoters they're so corny i don't want to shout you out every two seconds but deep down inside i'm like that's where the action is but just not getting it man uh, but you heard it here from uh norman now it's no longer cool to go out all you djs are going to lose your jobs so time to transfer i'm into sorry i'm sorry salaried positions and maybe you can date norman now yeah. as, as well if you have a nice salary and you know the lord and yeah. you go to therapy and you go to therapy please how can people find you on social media? What would you like to direct them towards? You can go on Instagram.com slash Norma now. I was thinking about, should I change my name? And I'm like, damn. No, I can't. Back to Norma is the best. Right? <laughs> that was the, Honestly, I should just go back to, I, that is who I am. Norma is the best. Yeah. And uh, yeah, I feel like Instagram. Don't go on my TikTok because okay. I'm just ranting about someone cutting me off and like, how sober I am and it's killing me. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you so much for uh, joining the Complete Animals. We started over again. I'm glad you are the first guest and uh, it was fun to like kind of because I've always seen you around and it was it was dope and I, I kind of knew like what you're about, but it's good to hear that I think we're on the same wavelength and maybe a lot of people are on the same wavelength and yeah. we don't even know it, you know? No, thank you. I I am glad that we got to connect and in a way that we can actually chat. There's not a loud room here and mm-hmm. I'm like, hey, what's going on doesn't this i usually i'm just like this party's not good or this party's okay now we know more about each other that's right (laughs) cool all right man complete animals see ya bye